Hey, Laburn98 here with part 3 of my capture and editing and rendering tutorial videos. Uh, this particular video is going to be geared more towards the uh, PS3 and in particular uh, capturing footage over HDMI. Uh, anybody who has uh, tried to capture uh, through HDMI with the Aver TV software is going to probably see this error right here. Uh, the program is protected and content cannot be recorded. However, uh, even though this is a pain in the butt, there is a way around this. Uh, so these are the things you're going to need for this tutorial. Uh, the first thing is VH Capture. Uh, I'm using VH Capture 1.4.6. Uh, second thing you're going to need is Fraps. Uh, Fraps is not free. Uh, you can get it here at Fraps.com, and you can get it for thir uh, thir so 40 bucks basically. And then, uh, third thing, you're going to need lots of these uh, hard drives because Fraps uses a ton of hard drive space. So uh, once you got all, all of those things, uh, it's on to the recording. Okay, uh, so the first thing you need to do is open up your VH Capture software. Okay, uh, then you want to make sure it's on Avermedia VDA Analog Capture Secondary. Uh, and, and then uh, you're going to notice either it's going to be flickering like this or simply just show a black screen. Uh, that means that it, it hasn't done the uh, HDMI handshake yet. Uh, to do that, you have to open up your Avermedia software. So go ahead and do that. Okay, uh, once it loads up, go to TV. Go through to the HDMI, which I already have selected. You'll see it already uh, did that. It's black here, but if you go to this, you'll see your picture. Uh, another thing is always make sure that the Avermedia software is uh, minimized and do not close it. Because if you close it, uh, it's going to go back to the scrambled uh, screen or black screen. Uh, now, in VH Capture, you're going to notice that it's stretched. Uh, that's because it's not set to... Uh, the widescreen uh, format. So to do that uh, in VH Capture, go to this little drop down and then video capture format. Go over to output size, then select your resolution. In my case, it's uh, 1280 by 720. Click apply and then OK, and you'll see that it, uh, it uh, made it uh, the right size. Okay, uh, so now in order to capture footage, uh, what you need to do is open up uh, your Fraps software. Uh, I'll show you my settings real quick. Uh, go to the Movies tab. Uh, select a folder where you have lots of hard drive space. Uh, the average Call of Duty, like 10 minute match, 8 to 10 minute, can take uh, anywhere from 15 gigs up to 30. So uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, but anyway, the, the key parts here are the video capture settings. I have it set to 60 uh, FPS. Uh, the reason I have a, a set to, uh, to 60 frame rate is uh, because if I ever decide later on to uh, uh, do some slow-mo in my videos, it's going to be a lot easier when you have more frames to work with. Uh, if, you want, if you're not worried about any of that stuff and you just want to uh, you know, uh, capture basic gameplay and uh, uh, want to save some uh, hard drive space, uh, you can set it to 30. Uh, that will also work. Uh, another thing I do is I lock the frame rate. I don't know if that makes a difference, uh, but it's something I do. And uh, full size. I set it to full size. That way I get the full size 720p and not the half of that. Uh, on the sound capture settings, I ha right now I have it set to record Windows 7 sound. Uh, what this will allow it to do is to capture all the sound going through Windows. So uh, in this case, your PS3 sound and whatnot. The problem with that is that this is your computer. So if you're uh, if you have someone uh, messaging you on MSN or Steam or something pops up in the background, you'll hear those pop those pop ups and sounds, uh, which is not really good when you're you're trying to record uh, some awesome gameplay. Uh, so th th uh, to work around that, uh, what you can do is connect your PS3 or Xbox. Uh, into the line in port of your PC and uh, click uh, on this where it says record external input 
Uh, right now I'm using my microphone for this tutorial, but uh, if I wasn't, it would show line in. And then that's basically it. Oh yeah, another thing is, uh, again, I have, I'm doing the tutorial, so I didn't do this, but is to check hide mouse cursor in video. There's been a few instances where uh, I've been recording uh, or sample doing some sample recordings of, of gameplay and then realized that my mouse cursor was on the screen, therefore it captured the, uh, uh, the mouse in the video, which you don't really want. So uh, to avoid that, just click uh, hide mouse cursor in video. And that's basically all you need for fraps. So once that's done, basically what you do is you go ahead and do your gameplay. Or in this case, I'm just going to go through the menu. So I'll go ahead and sign in. Uh, make sure fraps is running, which it obviously is. Uh, since I'm recording this tutorial with fraps, uh, you don't see this. But uh, normally, you would see the fraps counter within the, the screen of VH Capture. So it usually, it, it, fraps always starts on the left corner. Uh, or the you know, either corner and then when you go to to uh, simply record all you do is you push F9 and then uh, your recording uh, icon uh, the numbers will turn uh, from yellow to red which means that you're recording so go ahead and do your capturing software stuff and capture your footage I'll just go through real quick here I'll use infamous so anyways that's it and then uh, once you're done with that uh, push F9 again which will then uh, uh, stop fraps from recording and now it's just a matter of putting that into Vegas so I'll show you how to do that okay so before we start editing the fraps footage uh, I'll like to show you roughly how big a match is uh, this is uh, an Uncharted 2 match uh, it was 9 minutes and 9 seconds. The file size was 22.5 gigabytes. So uh, Fraps does use quite a, quite a bit of space. Uh, but that's beside the point. Uh, so what we're going to do is, uh, just like before, drag your clips. In this case, since Fraps puts its files into uh, 3.9 gig chunks, you have to take all of them and then drag them to your timeline. And depending on the speed of your computer, it can take a little while for it to go through. Okay, uh, so all your, well, you'll see all my clips are here. Uh, now, here's the thing uh, with fraps. At least I have this problem. I know a few other people have this problem. And it seems to be a common problem is that as the video goes on, it gets out of sync uh, with the audio. Uh, I am going to show you how to fix that. Uh, but I'll just show you an example here. Let's see if we can find something. Here we go. Okay, so to fix that, uh, this is usually what I do. Uh, the first thing, actually I'll show you why it goes out of sync. And here's a good example right here at this transition. You notice how it's black. And if you look close, if I z I'm zooming into the clip, you notice how it's not touching. And then there's probably some, here's another one right here. So anyway, uh, to fix this, uh, what I do, first thing I do, the audio is always in sync. So, uh, the audio, audio is always together nicely. So what you do is uh, I'm going to render out this whole clip. And I'm going to render it as a WAV file. So I go down to your save as type, select WAV. Okay. Uh, I have it set to 48 and then 16-bit stereo okay and then uh, find out where you want to save it so I'll save it under Uncharted 2 and I'll name it Uncharted 2 and then go ahead and render that it shouldn't take that long okay as you can see now once that's done, what you want to do is to remove this here. So remove that track. So what you want to do is make sure that only this one is highlighted blue. Click on it once, then right click, and then delete track. That will get rid of the audio. And now 
you want to import the other track. So go get your other track. I have it here. Enter to wave. Drag it there or on the timeline. So we'll drag it down to the timeline. Now here's the key is to make sure that your audio is right up to the beginning of the clip. And if you see on the left, it highlights a blue. That means it's joining correctly. And even still, if we look, actually it looks pretty good there, but we're not done. Uh, if you remember, I went over here and we saw during the transition there is black. There should not be a black screen uh, during that transition because there is no, there's supposed to be gameplay. So what we have to do is join all these together. The easiest way to do this is to grab, you don't need to grab the first clip, just the second clip and onward. Grab the clip, move it to the right, then move it back to the left until it shows a bluish uh, highlighted area, meaning that it's joining the clip. And just do this for all the clips. Okay, and then two more. If you do it too much, you're going to overlap it. So make sure it's it's highlighting blue. And then the last clip. Now, if I go to the edge, you're going to see that it's still all over the uh, the video. And it's, if you check the video, it's still going to be over at a sync. So to fix this, now what you have to do is go to the end of the clip. And then go to your audio. Now on, the, on your keyboard, uh, hold the control key. And if you notice on my pointer, uh, I don't know if you can see it there, but right there, uh, when I push the control, see I don't have it on, but if I push the control key, it shows a little squiggly line. What that's going to allow me to do is either to stretch the audio clip, or in this case I want to shrink it. So hold the control key, then, then move it over until it highlights blue like you see there. And if all this is done successfully, uh, you'll have all of your clip, so all of it's basically going to be uh, in sync. Okay, uh, so now what we have to do is uh, disable the resample. Uh, by the way, if you see I'm going back and forth like that, uh, to do that, uh, I'm zooming in the clip basically, is by uh, going pushing up and down on the uh, scroll wheel. Uh, just a little tip. Uh, but anyway, uh, to disable the resample, click on your first clip first uh, video go all the way to the end hold the shift key then click on that as you'll see it's all highlighted now you can click on right click on any of the clips go to switches and disable resample okay and uh, that's pretty much it you can go ahead and render it uh, now one thing I would recommend uh, this is uh, especially important if you are doing commentaries now but later on you decide you want to re-edit these videos for another purpose like a montage or whatever is to render this as a WMV for backup purposes only uh, I find uh, MP4 works great for YouTube uh, but when it comes to editing I find that WMV works better in Sony Vegas uh, render this as a WMV file so to do that go render as then select uh, Windows Media Video 11 uh, WMV. By the way, I'll select mine just to show you my settings. Okay, then go custom. Okay, uh, the the main things I changed in this was that I doubled up the frame rate, so it says double uh, NTSC. Again, that's good for if you want to do slow motion video stuff effects and things. It's better when you have more frames; it's more smoother. Uh, and also the bit rate, I. Uh, would put this to 15 oops not 158 <laughs> 15 and other than that and then the project to best but other than that it that's basically it and render that out now uh, if you want to do a commentary I would take that rendered uh, WMV file and bring that into Sony Vegas uh, but anyway that's pretty much it for this video uh, up next I'm going to actually uh, uh, put up a video of my uh, mp4 rendering settings and and all that so i uh, look forward to that uh, anyways until next time this is laburn 98 and uh i'm signing off